I'm going to demonstrate how to take a simple story and edit it to be so visually stimulating that people can't click away from it. Now the goal isn't to just entertain the viewer, it's to make them feel like they're actually learning something and discovering it for themselves. We will be diving a little bit deeper into ideation and how to come up with high-level concepts every time. So let's say that our subject was talking about an airplane. I can simply search something like airplane investigation scene. As you can see, here's a super cinematic reference we can use. So when we're collecting our assets, we can come back to this for reference. So I just searched jet model airplane, and then I found this image and I cut it out in Canva. You can use whatever tool you want. And then I searched airplane crash newspaper, and I just saved this image. And then I searched airplane journal World War II, and I took this image right here. I searched airplane blueprint and I took this image here, kind of the main image. And I just wanted one more prop, so I searched weather airplane card World War II and I took these playing cards. And then inside of Canva, I just removed the background. I added this sticky note and some text and then I save this as an image. Now, before we jump into DaVinci, there's a new AI tool I wanted to show you. It's called Mago, and they're the sponsor of today's video. It specializes in video to video, and I was especially amazed with the VFX I was able to create with it. What interests me is you stay in full control. You don't just write a prompt and hope for the best. It's a specialized software, so there's a lot more settings and controls for complete customization. Let me give you an example. The first thing I noticed is the timeline on the right over here. I really like this feature because it makes it so you can work on precise parts of your videos, making it perfect if you have different shots in the same video. Up here is the model box that gives us all the different models we can use. Each model is good for specific things, like replacing the characters, transforming everything, or even just upscaling. Here we can upload our own stylized image, or we can also build it directly in the app with a lot of strong models. Here we can select the frame number of the image we want to transform. I'm just going to leave it at the first frame. We can upload the style references here, and then you can write in your prompt and generate the image. Just like that, we have something that looks pretty amazing. Once your image is good, there's an auto prompt for the video itself, which knows how to get the best results. And now we can go to the control nets over here. As you can see, we have five different control nets for how the AI will read your source video and apply it to our new video. I'm gonna select this one and then I can decide to enable face mesh. This will let me track the face with precision. And then we can further adjust advanced settings here, such as quality or context for very long videos. Once you have this all customized, we can select generate on the exact frame range we want. Mego is in closed beta right now, but you can get instant access with my link below. And with code ZANE, you can get 50% off your first month with Pro. This is only for the first 500 people, so if you want quality VFX in your videos, click that link sooner than later. So here we are in DaVinci Resolve. I'm going to go to Effects and drag on a Fusion Composition Clip, and then I'm going to go to the Fusion tab. I'm going to drag on a background and connect this to the media out. I'm also gonna click this square up here to make it one screen. Now I'm gonna hit Shift Space and add an Emerge node. Now we're gonna drag on our background, which is just a picture of some wood. I'm going to hit Shift Space and add in a Transform node, and then we can just size this up to the full screen. So as you can see, it's a little bit bright, so I'm just gonna drag on a background and connect it to the media in one. And then I'm going to drag down the alpha. And so now we can always come back to our reference and kind of see how we wanna map things out. And so I'm gonna start with this main picture here. And I'm gonna drag in our picture just like this and connect it to the merge. Now I'm gonna hit shift space and add in a transform. And then we can just size this up a little bit like that. And I'm also gonna tilt the angle slightly like that. Hit shift space and add in a drop shadow just like this. And now we have to decide where we want our light to come from. So in this case, I think the light should be coming from this corner. So all of our objects will have a shadow on this side. I'm gonna drag down the drop distance a little bit because the further the drop distance is, the higher the paper is sitting. We want it really close to the table. So pretty close like that. And then we can just turn up the shadow strength a little bit like that. Now our reference, as you can see, we have kind of a book here. So I'm going to select the merge, hit shift space, add in another merge. And I'm gonna select this book I found and connect it to that merge. Again, I'm gonna hit shift space and add in transform. We're gonna size this book down and drag it off screen a little bit kind of like this and then rotate the book this way. Hit shift space and add in a drop shadow. Do the same thing. We're gonna increase the strength and decrease the drop distance. I'm going to add in another merge and I'm going to drag this page I found onto that merge. Add in a transform, size this down a little bit and bring it on top of this page. Now again, if something looks too bright, we can drag on a background onto our media in one and turn down the alpha. This will also help it blend in with the page a little bit. And then again, I'm gonna select the media in one, hit shift space and add in a drop shadow. And at this point, if your scene doesn't look cinematic, that's not a problem. 
Um, again, this is just the early stages. Once we add the effects, everything looks amazing. So I think for this other page, I'm going to add the deck of cards here with a piece of writing. So we're gonna add another merge in, bring in this deck of cards, add in a transform, and then play with the angle, add in a drop shadow. Now for the text, we can add in another merge and we're gonna drag this text node on and connect it to that merge. We can just type in something random like this and then I'm going to change the font to something like sign painter, just so it looks like handwriting. Kind of a choose a dark brown, just like that. And then we can hit shift space and add in a transform underneath our text. And we can just bring this down like this and then rotate it. Now we have something that looks like this. I'm going to drag in my model airplane connected to the merge, add in a transform and then rotate it like this. I think that spot will work. We're going to add in a drop shadow. This time we're going to drag the drop distance up because it's higher off the ground than the paper. Again, I'm going to add in another merge and bring in our book just like this and bring it to this top corner, something like that. And then add in a drop shadow, drag in our newspaper and connect it to that merge. And then you can just kind of play around different spots, whatever looks best. I think I might try putting a background on this one, connecting it and then dragging the alpha slightly down. I'm also going to go back to our first one, which is our main one, and then further play around. I think I'm going to drag it down a little bit so we have room for a title up here. Now I'm going to add a widget up here with the date of whatever is happening here, just to make it seem a little bit more informational. So to do that, I'm going to add in a merge node. I'm going to connect a background to that, select the rectangle mask, turn the height and the width down, add in a transform, and then we can just bring this up here like that. The rectangle selected, I'm going to turn up the corner radius a little bit, just like that. The background selected, I'm gonna drag down the alpha slightly, and then I'm gonna add in this SM outline effect in between the background and the transform. And as you can see, it's just gonna give me an outer edge. Uh, I linked this in the description with all the assets. Now, underneath the SM outline, I'm going to add in a drop shadow. I think I'm going to change the angle to match this angle here. Now I'm going to hit shift space and search PJT and I'm going to select the letter zoom in. All of these text animations are in the description. So I'm going to add that in and then connect it to this merge. So I'll write the date just like that. I'm going to change the font to an older looking font like that. And then with the transform selected, I'm going to place this inside of the box. And now, as you can see, if we go to the first frame, it writes out like that and it looks pretty nice. So now we can add in our magnifying glass effect. So to do that, we're going to select this merge and hit shift to space and add in a transform node. This is gonna control how zoomed in the effect is. And then on top of that, we're gonna add an ellipse mask just like this, and we're going to connect that to the transform. So we're gonna select the ellipse and we're going to make it smaller. So something like 0.15, and then I can copy that and paste it on the height. This circle is how big our magnifying glass will be. So as you can see, if we select the transform and zoom in, that's how the effect works. Now we're going to hit the transform and hit shift space and add in a merge node. And then I'm gonna drag in this image of a magnifying glass and connect it to that merge. And I'm gonna hit shift space and add in a transform. And we're just gonna size this down and match it to the circle of the ellipse. So as you can see, when we select our ellipse and drag it, it doesn't match what's directly underneath it. So what we need to do is match the center X with the transform pivot point. So how we do that is we select the ellipse and then we're going to select this pin, which means this will stay here. So look, when we select the transform, as you can see, we select the pin, so it stayed here. So first I'm just gonna disable that for a second. And so if we select the transform and right click the pivot and hit expression, it's gonna add in this plus. And if we drag this to the center of the center X like this. And so what that did is basically when we select our ellipse here, um, it's going to follow the movement to the pivot, like the center of it. So now wherever we move it, it's directly underneath it. So now if we reconnect our transform to the merge here, we want to basically have this magnifying glass also follow the ellipse when we move it. As you can see right now, it's not following when we drag the ellipse. So again, we have the ellipse pinned, so it's going to stay there. So we're going to select the merge. And again, on the center X and Y, we're going to right click and then select expression. And then again, we're going to select this point, click and drag and bring it to the center X right here. And so now I'm just gonna select the transform and readjust it on top like that. Now, if we select the ellipse, you can see that everything follows. And so now what I'm gonna do is add some distortion to this lens here. And so I'm going to select the transform, hit shift space and add in the dent node just like that. And I'm just gonna drag our magnifying glass to the center here. And then I'm gonna select our dent, 
and drag the size down. Now I'm going to select the type as dent two, and then we can play around with the strength. So I'm just gonna go with something like 0 0.05. Now you can see it has some distortion, but again, if we select the ellipse and move it, the distortion doesn't follow it. So I'm gonna hit Command Z, and with the dent selected, I'm going to right click the center again and select expression, and then same thing, click and drag to center X. So now as you can see, you can play around with it. So now what we can do is animate this magnifying glass. So we can go to frame one, select the ellipse, and drag it down. We're gonna keyframe center X and Y position, just like that. Now whatever we come to, so maybe frame 60, which is like two seconds, it maybe travels all the way over to here. Now we can go another two seconds, which would be frame 120, and then we can just drag it over to this newspaper like this. Now one thing I forgot to do quickly is select this transform, which is the magnifying glass, and hit shift space, and we're gonna add a drop shadow on it. And now as you can see, we have a shadow casting off it just like that. So again, we can select our ellipse, and this is the path it moves on. And so if we zoom in and select this point here, we can select this curve up here, and now the animation will be less harsh. And as you can see with these lines here, we can adjust it further. So we're gonna select our spline and select the ellipse, and we can smooth out our animation. So I'm gonna select this and press S, and then select this one and press S as well. And I'm going to bring this one up like this, and this one down like this. Now it will now it will stay at this point a little bit longer. As you can see, it kind of slows down there, and then goes back to here. I'm gonna make sure I select settings, turn on motion blur for this magnifying glass. Now back in the edit page, we're gonna add some effects on this to make it a lot more cinematic. So I'm going to select effects here, and drag on adjustment clip. So the first thing I'm gonna add is a vignette, so I'm gonna select resolve FX and search VI and drag on this one. Now I'm going to drag up the softness just like this, and then we can play around with the size depending on how much you want to be seen. And just like that, it already looks a lot better. And then before I add anything else on, I'm going to go to the clear page and I'm going to increase the shadows a little bit, increase the saturation, up the contrast. We can drag up the temperature for more orange look. So another thing I'm gonna add is called film grain, and it's gonna make it look a little bit more grainy. So once I apply that, I'm going to select the freeze so it's easier on our computer. I'm going to increase the opacity, turn down the grain size. Now we can zoom in and play with the grain strength. So obviously I'm gonna bring this down quite a bit. Now it's hard to see now, but once it's 4K and it's zoomed in, um, it makes quite a difference and it looks pretty cinematic. Now I'm also going to drag on a zoom blur. And as you can see, it says center exclusion. So I'm gonna drag that up. And when, and then when you drag up the zoom amount, you can see that the edges of the image are more blurry and it creates kind of like a camera film effect. It's pretty nice. Now I'm also going to add a camera shake to the adjustment clip just like that. I'm going to turn the randomness scale all the way down and I'm gonna bring the PTR speed to 0 0.04, which is just a slow camera shake, so it's not too distracting. So now we can animate the adjustment clip itself to kind of follow the magnifying glass. So on the first frame here, I'm going to zoom in and drag this down, something like this, and I'm going to keyframe the position. Now I'm gonna go over however many keyframes for it to reach its destination, so kind of right here is where it kind of ends up. So I can take my position X and Y, and then drag my camera up to that position. And then again, I can go over to here, and then again, I'm just going to drag my camera down. Now I'm gonna to go to my keyframes and select this up here. I can select all of position Y here. I'm gonna select ease in and out. And then I'm gonna do the same with position X. Select ease in and out. And now as you can see when we play it, the camera kind of follows the magnifying glass a little bit more.